Hello! Welcome to the Herb IRB version 5.0. It is the latest version and it's the greatest version. I've made some big old changes. If you're already a IRB owner, um, this is quite a bit different as you can see. I have now managed, thanks to Blender 3.0, I've managed to put it all in a group and arrange it much better. Um, because basically I opened um, the Rock Builder after downloading Blender version 3 and upon noticing that all of the wires were now coloured I could no longer hide them. Minor change for Blender devs, huge change for me. So um, the IRB is the first to be torn apart and rejigged into this and without further ado I shall get into this. Um, if this is <coughs> excuse me, the first time you've used the IRB then this is brand new, all good. And there are two sections to the new IRB. You've got this one which is the main control group and everything you, you need to change or you can change um, on any formation is all in now in this group the lot and I'll show you what how we get in um, to the finer details afterwards so I'll say what I'll do I'll put it in render mode so this is just a plane just your bug standard plane and it's been uh, subdivided physically thrice I believe and unwrapped so you uh, well if I select it all and then you it's I believe it's either unwrap or cube projection I think cube works, but it depends on your geometry, doesn't it? But for seeing as this is a 2D flat plane, there's not many unwrap options that aren't going to work. So, let's get into it. I'm going to turn off my um, viewport orange stuff. So, yeah. So, at the top, and as I say, if you know, if you already own the IRB, none of this is going to be new to you because everything in terms of how it functions is exactly the same. The only difference is there are, I've swapped out a few formations because I wasn't too chuffed with the last ones. Um, but you now it's just all in this group, so you can skip. Maybe I'll put a timestamp thing. So if you're brand new, up here you've got Tangent 3D, an object 2D formation mix. And to put it in a nutshell, Tangent 3D, which are all these formations, you've got 10 formations in Tangent 3D and object 2D formations are all down here and the reason they're called 3D and 2D is because they have um, they do different things so a tangent 3D formation if I was to uh, I don't need to do it because it would make this tutorial a uh, guide too too short too long <laughs> um, so if I was to extrude down the side of this plane here and I went down the y-axis with a tangent 3D formation the displacement follows the direction of the normal. So this face is pointing forward, so it's all coming forward. If I was to point, if I was to extrude here, then obviously the normals are pointing this way. And with tangent 3D formations, they will follow whatever geometry you put, whatever curvature you, is in there, whatever angles. Um, of course, obviously a good unwrap will help, but it just means that whichever way the way the face is facing is the way the displacement will. Um, displace but with 2D formations object 2D formations they only work they're only really good for fairly flat shapes you know if you need a backdrop a, a rocky cliff backdrop or um, just something that doesn't require much curvature because the 2D formations use a different type of displacement and they are pushing forward here but if I was to do the same thing and extrude this on the y-axis everything is still pointing forwards so all this will just be a sloppy mess because all the geometry wants to point forward tangent 3d formations point forward but they also point the side the normals facing so you go that way object it would be pointing this way and if you extrude it on the y-axis back here it's still going to point this way so you can get away with a bit of curvature but not too much all right that's it let's go let's go so <clears throat> running through the controls Object UV, I don't really need to explain that. You either have object mapping or UV. Um, and baking isn't an option at the moment. I'm going to put that in next, soon, um, hopefully this week, um, which will allow you to bake it where you need UV mapping. So that's why that's there. Okay. So all these scales for all the formations with previous IRBs 
were all on their own node group. Now this these here control every every formation. So if you want to change the scale, the strength, the sh uh, put a random shape in it or mid level, um, that will affect everything here. So I shall show you. So let's say I want that a bit larger. So I know always shift click. That's what I always do with the IRB. I never just click and drag because it's just too, it's always too much. So I always shift click, and let's just make that a little bit. Oh, that's cute. So that's that one. And if I was to go to formation two, it would have had the same changes. It's also going to be um, 0.4 of its original scale. So. Yeah, whatever you change here affects everything. So let's go back to Formation 1. And Formation 1 doesn't have a slider because it's default. The same as Object 2D, it's the first one. It doesn't need a slider. Once you switch to um, 2D, it's switching to Formation 1. And then you've got the Strength and then Formation 2. So um, we're on Formation 1. Um, yeah, so Scale, Strength, that's basically going into Displacement. So it will just tell you how much to go out. The Random Shape, that's just... You know, slide it, see what happens. Got a random shape, ain't you? And again, this works for all of them. Rather than in every all these controls being on individual node groups, twenty of them, now they're just here and they affect everything. So <clears throat> excuse me. And yeah, so you've got formation one strength. And the reason I've put strengths here is if I just put this back to back to default, random shape, I think it would on one point five. Hello. So <clears throat> the point in having them all here is that you can mix them all. So you can have a bit of one, a bit of two, a bit of three, a bit of four, a bit of five, whatever. Um, you can mix all of them. And you can also mix, if you went 0.5 here, you'd be mixing half tangent 3D, half object 2D, which effectively means you can mix 20 different um, formations. But the point of the strength, get back to the point, is let's say I'm now mixing in a bit of Formation 2. And the good thing about Blender 3 is it's very fast. It is super quick. So I've mixed in that much of Formation 2, and it's kind of going, yeah, made it all a bit manky. Um, and then let me mix in a bit of Formation 3, um, and you'll see why. So, yeah, we've we've mixed in three different formations, one, two, and three, but a lot of one has disappeared, and I like the big bouldery type effect of one. So all I need to do is shift click and just up formation one strength, and it will just push through that original <coughs> bouldery shape. So now I've got my boulders back, but I also got all this formation three and two and whatever. Uh, and as I say, you can mix mix anything. Once you mix it all the way up, then obviously it's it's the full mix. Um, but yeah, you can you can mix them in. What's important to note is um, this is all in a chain. So if you've got formation ten mixed, none of these are going to make any difference because formation ten at full mix is overriding anything above it. If you took formation down to ten down to about there, then you can mix others. So now this is mixing full eight and a bit of 10. Do you know what I mean? So yes, that is how you mix all of these and everything I just told you about <laughs> strength, um, no, formation one strength. <clears throat> um, everything I just told you about the tangent 3D formations, exactly the same applies to object 2D. Let's just skip over to one. I think I remember, I quite like five. Funds, formation funds. Come on, let's have a look at you. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. I like that, Johnny. So with this here, again, you've got the strength for all of them is here individually. <laughs> I wouldn't go that much. That's why I don't click and hold. I always shift click because that happens otherwise. So if you want to refine it, then that's how you do it. And you can mix these all in the same way. Again, they're all in um, uh, a chain. So if your formation 10 is at full, then nothing else ain't going to work. You know what I mean? All right, so let's get back to uh, Tangent 3D. So before I get into the nitty gritty, because inside this large group is is all these, and I'll get I'll get back to them. Don't worry, don't, it looks like there's a lot, but you're just going in there to shuffle sliders about and see what happens, which is mostly how it was made. <laughs> What's that, though? 
Ah. Um, okay, so once we've here's all your objects, let's move on. So these are now to the effects. So cliff top flatten. I'm sure makes sense in as to why I had that because sometimes you're going to want to round. Oftentimes you're going to want to round the top of the cliff because maybe you want some grass up there and you want to put some trees and ting. So the cliff top flatten because this is a 2D shape. It's just a 2D plane. I use this one. If I'd have made a shape that goes, you know, down on the y-axis, I'd be using 3D. Uh, that will change that. So because of this cliff uh, 2D shape, I again shift click and I'm going to find out where the level is by just moving it. And nothing happens. Oh, hang on. Have I confused myself? Yes. <laughs> it's actually 3D. I guess because I'm in tangent 3D. Um, so yeah, if you're in tangent 3D, use the 3D one should know that. Um, so yeah, I'm just shift clicking and I can see a visual representation of how it's been flattened. You see how it's gone now completely? It's because the flatten is too low. So I must draw it back somewhat, but not that far. So you see what's happening. As I'm sliding it, I'm, you know, reducing the displacement at the top to effectively nothing so that this can be rounded and that would still say flat. So that is cliff top flatten. Slide that back, we don't need it now. Come on. Um, ambient dust, very simple to explain. Let's go to the front and let's just, let me get a bit, let me get a bit more light here. I'm not enjoying my lack of light. Is that on 20? Sure is. Oh, I've hidden my stuff, haven't I? Yeah. Uh, right, one, let's rotate it on the Z axis. That's better. All right, let's move on. So ambient dust. So if I take it all the way off, brightens it up. If I put it all the way on, darkens it up. It's just using ambient occlusion. So any crevice, crack, crease, anything like that, um, it's going to fill it with this color. And you control the amount there, you control the color there. All sorts of things can be done with that, but it sets a multiply. So it's only really dark colors that are going to show. Fresnel, uh, I might actually relook really at the Fresnel because I don't think I've put enough of it in. Um, it's subtle, it's ever so subtle, but that's what it looks like without it. And it's just adding some reflection um, to certain parts. It's really difficult to see because I've got nothing else. It's just reflecting gray. But the Fresnel is just gives it a bit of a sheen um, that you can refine. All right. Uh, yeah, bump, strength, distance, don't need to explain that, you know, all that stuff. Sea level, this one, if you go, so let's mix it in. So cover roughness, which just means all of it, and then sea level mix. And this is just adding this, which is um, a sea level, basically. So I'm not quite sure why it's looking black at the moment. It should be that color. Uh, again, something's gone wrong there. I need to look at that. But... Uh, we can just make it less black by reducing the amount. So as you can see, it's trying to calculate some roughness here, uh, some shininess. So this, this here is the level that we've set. And if I use the contrast, you can make it well, obviously more contrasty so that it doesn't spread as far up the, the cliff face. So you can get a very definite line here. So if you have this... Um, if the sea was here, if this was in water, you could just bring that line up, ramp up the contrast, or if it's a very fast <laughs> um, moving tide, then you could soften it up with less contrast, but I have it on one. So you see, as I lower it, it's kind of creeps up a bit. But that is sea level. Well, hang on, object UV mapping. So yeah, that's the same thing. You just move your UVs to check where it is. 2D, 3D switch. Um, if it was a 3D shape, this is definitely, because this is a 2D shape, absolutely, um, the sea level is here. If we switch to 3D, so let's say you've, you've brought in a boulder, so an icosphere or something, when you put um, that on, if you, if you don't switch to 3D, there won't be a, a, a dark line here. It'll, just, it'll probably be over here somewhere. So any time you change the, the shape, just try and see which one works, but... Normally, a 3D shape is going to need a 3D switch. Uh, 2D height and 3D height. So this is we're in 2D, so we can 
shift control this and again just move it up or down the um, the face you could do the same thing by selecting your UVs and then just moving them but it's easier to to have these controls here and this cover roughness color is all over roughness let's just lose and go back to cover roughness so if I made this black it would be bare shiny see what I'm saying so um, it's not that it's it's got a little bit of um, a little bit a e whatever sea level color done so moss snow simple mix it in push there's your your moss it's it's based on the normal so it's always going to be at the top and there's there's the colors change all the colors there if they were all white it'd look like snow wouldn't it uh, so let's yep that's moss covered let's close that and the color filter one and two are for the, here because now we can get to color so we're changing colors here color one color two and this mixes the two of them together so if for instance we're on mix and I bring this all to zero that's going to be color one and I've actually got to swap <laughs> the filters around um, when this gets to you uh, because I've I've wired them the wrong way round. So um, yeah, if we let's just to make it abundantly clear how this works, I'm going to pick the most garish colours that do that'll do. It's hideous. And then down here, um, yeah, I think I've wired up colour filter two to filter one. So these will swap and it'll all be lovely. So scale. This is just, you can see which, which filter it's based on. So this one is clearly a Musgrave because you've got dimension. And this one is absolutely a noise filter. So if you're familiar with those, you know, this will all be the same old stuff. Random shape, just if you've copied some bits and you move a slider and nothing happens. Need to fix that. Um, yeah, and that's, that's color filter one. So if we now mixed over to color filter two, again we're mixing, so we're just replacing with color filter two. This one is a noise filter, isn't it? And I've got no got no detail. Um well you get it. You know, that's how it works, that's how it works. And what you can do is mix the two. Obviously as well with your color ramps here, you've got lots of control of how that color's being displayed. So I want a bit more red or little less red about here will do it you've got that control and then this this will mix them so at the moment they're mixed uh, it's, it's set to mix so as you've just seen zero is color one one is color two but we can interact make them interact with each other by picking something so I don't know overlay what's that do so now it's all of these it's all four colors are being that's crazy look at that what a weird looking rock um, and yeah, you can control how much they're going to mix with each other. But I recommend not having such an awful blue. Ain't nobody got blue rocks. That's much nicer. It's kind of Mars. Um, and that is almost dust. Um, so yeah, the dust shape. You can use this and it will, you know, less black. It will lighten it up. More black, it's going to really darken those creases. Um very much but it also the more this is over the more that darkness will spread so you kind of want to find a however I had it before was a happy middle ground maybe even just bring this up lighten up the bits that aren't dark okay so that is everything you need to make all your formations do all your jiggly pokery right here but for people who miss all the old filters they are in here so you just click the main group, press tab, bosh. This is all still here. So you can continue to edit the shape. I think, am I on one? I think I'm on one, formation one, yes, yes, yes. So formation one, you can change a load of stuff. And again, it's literally just shift click and then just move stuff and you know see what happens. Because you make fans that crazy. And this is why it's called the Infinite Rock Builder. Because all of them, all 20 formations, have got stuff like this. And, you know, sometimes you might just go too far. And it's like, well, it wasn't meant to be that small. So that's why it doesn't look great. Um, some of them might not do 
in, might, might not be instantly obvious, but on closer inspection, you may find what they're doing. So yeah, just shift, click, and hold, and then just move stuff about and see what what changes. If you're not particularly too chuffed with the original one of twenty formations or however many you've mixed, just go in here, tab, and then just you know mack around with the formations you've got. You just nothing nothing advanced about it. Just move sliders and control tab to get out. So tab to go in, control tab to go out. You can press tab, and if you've got nothing selected, you can just press tab again. But if you select a group, you end up seeing that, and no one wants to see that. That's why I hide it. That's why I hide it away. So, um, that's it. That's the new IRB version 5.0. Um, it's just way quicker. It's way easier. Using Blender 3 as well, other than my shock and horror at seeing my the other... Um, the other builders in Blender 3 and seeing all these horrible wires coloured everywhere, it has put the boot up me, um, so to speak, to just try and find the best way to improve this with the least amount of wires. And there are still a lot of wires, but I have cunningly hidden them. You cannot see them. I don't recommend going down here, because you'll see them. Stay up here. Don't go down there. Stay up here. Okay, that is it. That's the lot. Wicked. Um, I really hope that's uh, good for you. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope, well, it's easy to use. There's no hoping about it. It clearly is easy to use um, and quicker and more efficient. And with Blender 3, it's super quick. So, wicked. I hope you have much more fun with the herb. Until next time, I have been Nick. You have been you. Farewell.